Hey, what's up? Malhari here back with another video. You know guys, what I'm gonna talk about today is about the code. As you think, as you know, in my last three videos, I showed you how to build this thing. And see it's currently on. So today I'm gonna discuss about the coding and also give you a very basic code. Um, <coughs> actually it's basic but it's actually kind of advanced because this is the advanced line follower bot and also mesh solver today i'm going to discuss about the line follower only but that line follower code will also be an advanced code but the best part about it is you guys can tinker it i i mean you guys have to tinker it because you have to calibrate your specific robot with that code so without just wasting time let's get started as you guys know as you guys know i have selected a 6 ir array okay so what is this 6 ir sensors you guys know how ir sensors works you can see there are two pairs right there one is black another is white the actually you can tell by the color which one is the sender and which one is the receiver but you can do it with your mobile phone i mean uh, infrared light we cannot detect infrared light but the cameras can and that's why all of our cameras including the smartphone cameras have an ir filter on them so <coughs> to block slight of the ir radiations reaching the light because it very much spoils your picture quality so in this camera what you're seeing right here you can see a slight glow holy sh actually you cannot see what the sh i think this camera is a little bit good so let me switch to switch to the front camera hopefully we'll able to see the ir light okay let's try it there we go we have switched to the front camera and now as you can see yeah that's what i'm talking about don't know why though but the smartphone has a very good ir filter on its back camera who knows about that <laughs> now as you can see the leds are glowing can you see that isn't it cool actually there is nothing but the cool part about it is you cannot see it i mean you cannot see the leds glowing with your bare eye but this camera can see this camera is awesome the camera quality is actually not that good but i think you got your point isn't it now the same thing as you can see it's turned on still as you can see the battery indicator is glowing but you cannot see the LED is glowing that's because of the IR filter i didn't know that this smartphone has a very good IR filter on its back so whatever I digress so the thing is that that IR thingy is going and hitting the, your surface and then coming back and these black ones these black ones are sensing that and according to that it's detecting whether the surface is black or white now we must how it recognizes that color so you might know that black surfaces absorbs light and white surfaces reflects light so that's the simple principle in white surfaces the ir light bounces back to the receiver and the receiver senses it and that's why it detects that it's white surface and in black surface most of those ir lights are absorbed by the black surface and that's why it doesn't reflect back to the receiver and that's why the receiver sends nothing and that is the little threshold you can adjust through your potentiometer as i put in here as you can see you can adjust the threshold in what is the transition value where where your receiver is receiving the reflected light that's what this is a simple phenomena of reflectance we are using here these are actually pretty inexpensive ir pairs you can buy more expensive ones like smd which used in pololu what pololu pololu wow what name Polulu sensors, those use reflectance sensor, those are pretty much accurate. I mean, those are very, very accurate. These are not because 
these are inexpensive if you have more bucks in your pocket then you may buy the, those ones okay so i will discuss about the pid algorithm also of controlling these bots but as of now i am just using the manual control algorithm to drive this robot to follow a line and that's pretty simple as you can see we have six sensors in there i have made this to follow a 30 millimeter line okay so that's why my two of those front sensors are placed at the 30 millimeter gap so one 30 meter line and the two sensors will light up all of these sensors are placed such a way that at any instance one 30 millimeter line or three centimeter line will block two of the sensors the robot can occur these cases the first one is only the middle two sensors are lighted that means the robo is on the line as i have told you earlier that you have to design the robo at such a way that the front any of those two sensors are placed at 30 millimeter distance because we are making our robo for 30 millimeter lines and guys let me tell let me tell let me tell uh, let me tell about this the 30 centimeter the 30 millimeter not centimeter millimeter lines the 30 millimeter lines are the standards you can see any of those competitions out there they all have their manual or the competition brochure you can see there most of the times the lines are 30 centimeter strips three centimeter strips after just somebody is smoking right there always make sure to connect the electrolytic capacitors in the right polarity or else they will you so the thing is that the first case is the robo is aligned with the line and the middle two sensors are lighted the second case is what I put it in here is called second degree correction. You can call it whatever you want. I have, I have called it second degree correction because we have a little bit of correction in the mode O as well. You can understand it by using your Arduino code knowledge and also everything is commented pretty nicely. So if you look a little bit, you can understand it pretty well. I'm not going to discuss the whole code here because that will make this video long as sh and nobody will watch it as always as you, as you know I am trying to make videos short and simple not more than 10 minutes okay this one will be a little bit longer I guess the second degree correction is where the side sensors come into play and as you can see I have used W and B to generalize the concept if you are running your robo in a black line with white background you can also tweak it by defining w as 0 and b as 1 okay and if you are running a robot in a black surface and with white lines then you have to put w equals 1 and b equals 0 that's the generalization i have done in here so that you don't have to modify the whole code according to your surface color so you just have to redefine those two variables w and b that's the thing you have to change to change your configuration of your board i call it white on black and black on white what name isn't it so whatever and second degree correction you have a couple of cases where the side sensors come into play the first case is w w b b b b that means from your side ww means this two ww b b b b that means this two will light up the extreme left sensors will light up that means the line is here so robo had to make a correction like this what the so the line is facing this side so robo have to make a correction like this so it had to speed up its this motor it has to speed up this motor so that robo will make a, your movement like this 
and that's how it aligns itself with the line and as you can see in this video it makes a lot of jitter isn't it it's like why is that happening is because we are correcting like this and then the line is bending towards these sensors and that's why it's making a correction in this direction and this thing keeps on happening this is called the oscillation and this is the thing we can solve using PID algorithm which is topic for another video I will discuss about PID control algorithm so that you can reduce this jittering and robot will be smooth as butter smooth as butter so now, now you have to deal with this jitter and you can also try to fix it using your manual control algorithms but that will be too much difficult and make the code long as sh and that's why you see those non PID bots making this kind of jitters because it always try to align itself straight to the line but never succeeds because we are making equal amount of forces in both the sides to correct it in PID control algorithm what happens is that we make less and less less and less adjustments until it comes to rest and goes like this so the oscillation, oscillation pattern will be like a damn sinusoidal wave am I going too much technical? I think so let's keep this video simple okay so the next case is we call it D or dead end that means none of the sensors are lighted up so in that case if suppose you have a sharp bend in your line and the robo just drifts away with the line and the robo senses nothing so what will happen the robo will still they stay there like an idiot and not follow your line and that's why at the very beginning of this read sensor function you can see for advanced correction if the robo goes out of line it is commented right there this portion of code will remember from which side the robo went out of line so this is another feature i added the robo will remember from which direction it gone out of line drifted out of line like you have if you have a sharp turn like this am i visible in the camera yes i think so if you have a sharp turn like this and the robo just goes and goes and goes and goes out like that it doesn't follow because it will be in speed and the wheels may skid off to the surface what the and if it goes out of that line it will remember that it will remember from which side it went out of line and make a correction to that side to realign itself with the bended line isn't that cool isn't that a genius design no it isn't okay for that this sensor comes into play and this sensor remembers that from which direction it goes out of line so we call it a dead end case and the next case next two cases are pretty simple that is left or right if you have a 90 degree turn in that case your all of these sensors will light up isn't it the four of those sensors will light up and that will be called as our left case and vice versa for the right your right four sensors will light up once so these are our sensors and we have another case at the very end that is called x or it is also called checkpoint detector so i have added this feature you may exclude that too because i added this feature because it gave me more points in our competition it is called a checkpoint detector that means when you are following a line the line will contain the straight lines on it which you have to detect them and you have to light an LED or beep the buzzer to get extra point that means the robo can detect those checkpoints checkpoints are nothing but just a cross intersection in the line like you have a straight line and you have an intersection like this so robo have to detect it and light up one of the LEDs or beep the buzzer or whatever so that's one our first function the next function comes to play the blink without delay so I will talk about this in my <coughs> basics video or in advanced video just for now just remember that I have talked about this the delay function is actually bad it pauses the whole loop of the R video so blink without delay means you, your code will run but still you will use the delay it will just blink you LED nothing about that okay so now we come to the loop we have a switch case as I've told about those cases 
it will switch them according to the sensor values isn't that simple and run these motors see we have this straighter and we have this f speed and course speed and turn speed three variables you can find at the top of the code you can vary them to change your speed as you know it takes 255 takes the 8 bit value as you know the an digital the analog write function takes 8 bit values so you can provide anything from 0 to 255 to speed up your motors 255 means high speed and anything will be lower than that will be lower speed that is pretty much simple you guys all know about that so you can vary those <coughs> to tweak with your settings and calibrate your board with your own line because every and each and every motors are different even two of my motors are different from each other one spins a little bit faster than the other and that's why I have to make a lot of corrections make sure while you are buying motors to check them whether they run at same speed both are rated at 500 rpm but one runs a little bit slower and also one has a little bit less torque than the other so that's a little bit pain in the ass. making things are hard again it's what the f make sure to turn it off while it's not in use so that's all about, about our code you can understand it pretty, pretty accurately if you read all the comments because everything is commented pretty accurately this, and also this code is a little bit longer you can find more less complex code in the online for this kind of box but this is the advanced line for our bot don't forget about that you have to make those 90 degree bends and you have to also detect those checkpoints and also the in the line it's a lot of thing going on there so don't underestimate my code with the online codes shouldn't be mad about that now i think you all got my point and also in my previous video on my, on my previous videos of the build i have never mentioned about this buzzer and you have seen this kind of tone while the robots is starting so this is just a fancy setup you guys also can do it it's included it's not included still but if you guys want this feature in your bot then you can comment down below i'll post video in my next video or something like that post video about that in future and also i will tell you how to modulate the tone in your buzzer in my arduino advanced series okay so till then keep watching auto syllabus in my next video i will show you how to create the mesh solver algorithm and also discuss a little bit about PID I don't know uh, I think I should discuss about PID in my next video isn't it PID is a very good control algorithm which you can use to control your bot as you have seen the jittering makes a lot of problems in PID will your bot will run smooth as f till then keep watching auto syllabus if you like this video give it a thumbs up thumbs down for the opposite and if you haven't been subscribed yet don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to get notified about my latest upload this is my you watch our syllabus and i'm not signing out yet because i forgot to mention about my patreon if you guys really want to support me then check on my patreon profile below in the description and if you guys want then be my patreon i'm not making any videos very soon because well i need support in my patreon so whatever if you guys want then i request you to support me on Patreon to keep the show going. So this is Malari Wolchi on the syllabus and I am signing off.